800 million bucks. I read it in the paper. And you're not even... Are you 40? I'm 41. 41. Yes, 41. <laughs> I want to show you what he just bought. He bought Marjorie Merriweather Post's 150 rooms. 56 bedrooms this guy's got. In Pomp... Show them, Brian. This is Mar-a-Lago. That's an aerial view. Now listen to this. I think we got... There are two pictures here, are there not? You've got to see this place. Look at this. He has a staff of 50, 30 security guards, and this guy can't buy your lunch after Black Monday. How did you do? And you must have lost your shirt. Come on. No, I was lucky. I was out of the market pretty much, Phil. Um, like you, like you, and like a lot of others. I think most of the people in your group, I don't suspect too many of you were in the stock market during the little crash. A couple were. A couple were. I wasn't. I like real estate better. This... Uh, uh, he, when he graduated from high school, he had two hundred. Uh, from college, he had two hundred thousand dollars. Went to the Wharton School of Fima Finance, University of Pittsburgh. No, I'll tell you, no, University of Pennsylvania. I'm sorry, University of Pennsylvania. I'll tell you this. You know, I, I kind of, after reading your book, I kind of like your father better than you. He's a nice guy. <laughs> you have good taste. He's a good guy. Uh, show him number one. Uh, let's just try and briefly give you a bio here. This is Fred Trump, age eighty something. Yeah, he's eighty one. Eighty one. Uh, he built middle-income housing in Queens and Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And little Donald go along and rummage around the construction sites. And obviously his father taught him a thing or two along the way. Look, uh, let's see number three. Here, here's 12-year-old uh, here's Donald inspecting, uh, yeah, checking out the geology. I don't know what you're doing there. But uh, now, listen to this. Your parents, uh, enlightened as they were, sent you to... Next slide. The New York Military <clears throat> Academy. Only you went not in this uniform. Is that somewhere in the computer? There you are. Look at the proud parents and... Uh, obviously, the strap is so you'll keep your mouth shut. Something... Uh, uh, and your graduation photo. Next slide. Just give them a quick trip here. Look at this. Uh, so you came out disciplined. You probably said yes, sir, no, sir, and all it was, those... It was a good education. It was a good training. It was a good training. I enjoyed it. Uh -huh. You didn't get married until you were 30-something. 30 31 years old, yes. Mm -hmm. You lived in a uh, small apartment in Manhattan? A little small apartment. I had a lot of good time in that apartment. That was a lot of fun. I've had more fun in that apartment than I have in Trump Tower, as good as Trump Tower. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, your dad uh, would build medium-priced housing, and the rules, as I understand the game, as you explain it to us in this book... Trump, the art of the deal, and uh, not a few folks are rolling the dice on this one, too. The front page of the Wall Street Journal today tells us that they're printing 150,000 copies. Tweaked your cheek a bit. You said there were 200. Exaggerating, okay, Mr. Height. No, I'll tell you truthfully, it, I thought it was 200, and I think it will be 200, but I'm not sure what it is. I don't know what it is exactly. It's 150 to 200,000. Uh -huh. I guess. I don't know. Are you going to sign books in the stores and you going to do all that stuff? Every once in a while, I might have to do it. I uh -huh. mean, whatever it takes. All the money is going to charity. I'm giving all of the proceeds to charity. So it's nothing for me, but it's something very important. I'd like the charities to get a lot of money, and I'd like to also make it nice and successful, because I like having successes. I like success much better than failure, somehow. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Show them uh, Mrs. Trump, number seven, that is, in our computer. Ivana is her name. She was a top fashion model and a, uh, yes, she was. Look at here. And also a skier, uh, I believe, a near Olympian. She was That's correct. alternate That's or correct. Uh -huh. yes. uh, Here you are on your honeymoon. Next slide. Uh, where, where'd you go on the honeymoon? You probably went to Atlantic City. Huh? We were in Hawaii, actually. Oh, Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you really have caught the attention. You're a star, Mr. Trump, and you're a businessman. And you do not run away from publicity. Uh, we can only speculate on how long you may have posed for these uh, rather not flattering... Not long. Not long. Just... The good part about being a... I don't have enough time to do a lot of posing, and fortunately we have some pretty good photographers, so they get good pictures. But it's uh, not, not a lot of time, Phil. I just don't have the time, unfortunately. You, um, your father had to come in 
at the right price, and he also was entitled to 7.5% profit. Is that what I understand? Basically, that's right, yes. And so he had to really count the nails just It's a much different business. There's no question about it. I mean, I count the nails also, but I count them in a different sense. My father built low and moderate income housing in Brooklyn and Queens, and it was a tough business. And today, that kind of a business really doesn't even exist. Unfortunately, you don't have the government programs that allowed you to do this years ago. My business is much different than that, and, and it's turned out to be wonderful, but it's much different. It's a much different kind of a business. Mm -hmm. You say that uh, in order to <clears throat> ensure that he was uh, profitable, this made it extreme, this made it very necessary for your father to be, he was at the site at six, wasn't he, in the morning? He, he was there early in the morning and he'd leave late at night and every nail was going to be counted and he knew every contractor, as I do really, you have to know what you're doing. You take a look at the city of New York, they can't build an ice skating rink. An ice skating rink was under construction, I guess, for a period of seven years, the Wollman Skating Rink in Central Park, and they couldn't build it. They spent 12 or 14 million dollars, was supposed to cost two, and we did it for, uh, in about four months, as you know, for it's a very big, small amount of money. You big, know, it's, it's big success story, no doubt about it. The, uh, you came in and uh, came in under, and you did it in months when the city was fooling around. It was a, it was a very interesting statement on government bureaucracy, et cetera, et cetera. And boy, you looked like a Republican businessman standing there when they cut, a, cut the ribbon. But who's to complain? They're, they're skating as we speak in Central Park. Now, you try to get in. You're, you're single, and you've, you're out of the Wharton School, and uh, you've moved to Manhattan, right. leaving your roots, we might say. Ahem, we can only speculate on how your father <laughs> felt about that. Uh, and you want to join the club, Lay Club. Well, you know that, uh, I, I, club, I, Phil. You, you're there all the time. I, I, I mean, you know, he's, he's putting, on, tell he's you putting on the little uh, I, lack of pronunciation here now. I, 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 you listen, were never at Lake Club? Call me anything. Don't call me huh? hypocrite. I've There's, never been to Lake Club. Uh, okay. But, uh, but I, I'd be proud to be there someday. Okay. This is not a... I don't Good mean... Place. Good fine. Place, yeah. You meet... Uh, <laughs> now, they won't... Who is this guy, Trump? He's 27 years old. The guy says, you know, we don't... Uh, it's, you know... Uh, so he, he calls the president and he gets them to have a drink with him. They go to 21 and these guys are drinking. Now, I just wasn't used to that. You say, listen, fellas, I got to go home. They said, nah, let's have one more. Now, I wasn't used to that, you say. I have a father who's always been a rock, very straight and very solid. I believe that. My father would come home every night at 7, have his dinner, read the newspaper, watch the news, and that was that. Swedish. Swedish. Yes. Swedish, German, a lot of a lot of different things. His, his mostly, mostly good, right? Well, and his uh, his and good, strong guy. Yes, good, solid man. And his father probably plowed his rows straight, or whatever they. Very strong. His parents. Yeah. Right. And I'm as much of a rock as my father. This was a totally different world. I remember wondering if every successful person in Manhattan was a big drinker. I figured if that was the case, I was going to have a big advantage. Uh, the guys almost passed out, and you helped them home and you got in the club I got in. later on I got in yes yeah. you're a rock you don't drink at all well when I say rock I mean I think I think of myself as being a solid guy um, you have different definitions of people nowadays you have the word flake you have people that are strong people that aren't strong and everyone is fine I'm just saying that I would say that I'm rather solid and I, I'm proud of that mm -hmm. so I was a little when I came into Manhattan at first I saw people that were not of the same ilk in the sense that in, in certain instances they just weren't what I grew up with in terms of a very strong father figure, a very wonderful mother figure and I was seeing different kinds of people and it was interesting to me but I thought I might have an advantage. Uh-huh. Uh, you drink then a white wine to be, while you're staying? I really don't drink at all. You don't, don't drink at all? I don't, you know, I don't drink for a lot of reasons. I don't like what it does to people. I figure it can't be good and I just don't really enjoy the taste, perhaps most importantly, but I don't like it I've seen so many people over the years that I had great respect for. And then we'd go out and I'd see him totally lose control. And all of a sudden I say, why would a person subject themselves to that? I mean, I've had people who I have tremendous respect for. And then you go out to dinner and you have to literally carry them from the, from the table to their house. Not a good thing. No, no I don't we like are it. Agreed. I don't like it. Um, Mike Wallace called this to your attention during your, the 60-minute piece on you. You're always dressed up. I mean, at the poolside in your Greenwich home, in the Sunday afternoon, you come up with the silk tie, and that's just who you are, huh? It's just, I don't know, I tend to be formal. I like being formal somehow, and I'm not always dressed up. On a Sunday, I'm not dressed up, and on a Saturday, depending on what I'm doing. But 
generally I tend to be doing business and usually for business I feel that you should be sort of attired a certain way and I've I've always been somewhat formal in that regard right I'd rather be a little bit too formal than not formal enough uh-huh you're um I'll bet you you pick up your socks and your underwear, too, don't you? Or do you? I don't know. Uh, I never gave it much thought, but I guess I do now that I think of it. You deposit them in the appropriate... Uh, put, them, put them wherever they go. Uh, now, did, did, did the New York Military Academy do that for you, or were you always like that? I think, and maybe this is a part of the book and what's happening, I think that people tend to be what they are. If a person's neat, if a person's orderly, they tend to be that way throughout a life. And if they're not they tend not to be. I've always been pretty neat and pretty orderly and pretty, uh, pretty uh, well adjusted from that standpoint. So I've, I've just, I, I've had a good training, mm -hmm. but I really believe that in many cases, and perhaps that's not a good example, but in many cases, people really have it or they don't have it. And that's what I'm trying to get through to an extent in the book. Yeah. Uh, your mother is of Scottish, uh, is Scottish by birth. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, you, you tell us here, and uh, I must say there's, there is some personal information in here. Not a lot, but it's an interesting look. I like to, you know, leave it out as much as possible. Well, that's getting that's more, more you get, difficult. Right? When you, if you're going to be worth a billion dollars, you've got to start answering some questions here. Um, your mother watched the coronation, didn't she, of uh, Queen Elizabeth? I guess, yes. 53, I think. Right. Somewhere in there. Don't go. That's right. uh, and your father said, for God's sake, what are you doing? She just sat in front of that set all day, didn't she, watching the she's pomp? A, and... She's really a wonderful woman, and she's got the little showbiz and perhaps that's I mean I was obviously very young but just in thinking back I believe that whatever I have in terms of the dramatic whether it's a Trump Tower or doing a Trump Park or or the hotels or whatever it might be I think I've gotten a lot of that from my mother actually and my father is a very strong solid uh, meat and potatoes guy that excuse me where are you in this shot there is that you with the hair I'm on the left oh all the way on the left yes I'm on uh, the left uh-huh go ahead you were saying so my father's a little bit different type. Uh, he, uh, he gets things done and quickly and all, but he's less, uh, perhaps less promotionally oriented. So it's a good combination, I think. Mm -hmm. getting, getting, if you get the, the best traits of both, that's a really good combination. I hope. You, uh, uh, your father was, was there a lawsuit? You didn't have enough black, or he didn't have enough blacks in his project. There were blacks in his housing development, but uh, the federal government, and that upset you? I didn't like it because it wasn't fact, and I decided to fight it. And this was a lawsuit against numerous landlords in New York many, many years ago, and I didn't like it because it wasn't true. In fact, in one building they went, and there was a preponderance of blacks as opposed to whites. And I remember being asked a question, the question was asked of our people, how many blacks do you have? And we said some huge number, like 70% or 65%, and they almost fell off the chair. Here they are suing us, and we're saying, a certain number. We've never discriminated. We don't believe in it. And uh, I just thought on a principal ground I should, I should fight. And other landlords didn't. Okay. And we settled and it worked out very well. Uh, one of the people you meet at Le Club, I gotta get to this place, uh, was uh, Roy Cohn. May he rest in peace. Roy. You liked him. He was feisty. Well, I liked Roy from the standpoint that he was a very loyal guy. When you see things happening nowadays, you see very little uh, loyalty. You see an Ed Koch uh, leaving everybody that gets in trouble in New York immediately. He doesn't know his commissioners. He doesn't know Bess Morrison. He doesn't know anybody. He doesn't want to know about it. You know, he just drops them like they never existed. The one thing I'll say about Roy is he was an extremely loyal guy, and, and he was a very unusual guy in that respect. So he was loyal. And loyalty is a great trait. In yeah. my opinion, it's a great trait. Yeah. It's a trait that maybe can cause problems, but it's also a great trait. Right. Uh, well, this is interesting because, as you know, you're the uh, fat cat uh, developer, and, uh, you know, the book on you is that you throw little old ladies who can't afford their rent out of the apartment. Uh, I don't think that's the book on me, if you want to know that. Well, I, mean, I think that's... I don't think it is at all. I think probably it's just the opposite. Uh, we have very wealthy people in this particular building. We have a building on 100 Central Park South, the best, probably the best piece of real estate in New York in the world. And we have very wealthy people, extremely wealthy people living in this building. Well, they have second not, homes. It's not quite accurate to say that every occupant is an extremely wealthy person. No, but person. the ones that were complaining were the wealthy ones. The right. ones that were complaining, Phil, were the wealthy ones. All These right. are people with uh, a lot of money. One of them owns a brownstone, a number of brownstones on East 66th Street, and yet she's living in this building for a rent-controlled rent. The rent-controlled people, the people that need rent control, they're not the ones that are protected. It's people that are usually wealthy with a lot of influence that have the connections to get a rent control apartment. People that might need it, they don't have rent control apartments. 
<laughs> well, I, that's a little facile. I mean, it's, that's a little bit like saying, uh, you know, those well, people I'm, are out of work because they're lazy. No, it's, it's I not. I think it may be. Or, well, first of all, let's, let's, the, uh, the building on Central Park South has been settled. You own it, and you've, you've made your deal with all the residents. It's, we're very uh, happy with it. Score one for you. Uh, Very happy. Uh, uh, back to this uh, this lawsuit. So you hire uh, Roy Cohn, and he goes to work, and you win it. Uh, he, uh, Cohn doesn't like lawyers either because they s always want to settle, and you don't like that about lawyers. The idea of settling drove me crazy. The fact was that we did rent to blacks in our buildings. What we didn't do was rent to welfare cases, white or black. I'd watched what happened when the government came after Samuel Lefrac, another builder, and he caved in and started taking welfare cases. They virtually ruined his buildings. Um, welfare cases ruined his buildings. Isn't that, aren't you pretty this close here to, yeah, uh, no, to looking no, like no. an insensitive guy uh, from atop your Trump Tower looking down on the Walman rink over the vast holdings of your own empire? Shouldn't we have just a little more understanding from Absolutely. a man of your influence and wealth on the issue of making New York livable for all of us, safety on the subway, absolutely. these if that absolutely. If the answer is absolutely, then we can't continue to give you guys these big tax breaks. And that would go for General Electric and NBC, too. You tell us in your own book that you would make money. Uh, in, on the Trump Tower in, in New York but when everybody without else is the tax break. So when everybody else in the city gets it but Donald Trump, when Koch and the administration tries to stop Donald Trump, and I don't say give me the tax breaks, I say don't give everyone else the tax breaks. If every other building being built in New York City is entitled to a residential tax abatement and Trump Tower goes, and I'm not entitled, I'm the only building in the city of New York that's not entitled, I don't think that's a problem. Look at the look at the location of your building. What, what difference does it make? There are other wonderful locations. Difference. Phil, there are other wonderful locations also that are also getting tax abatements. I won the case. They didn't give it to me. It took me two and a half years in court. I won it seven to nothing in three different courts, and I'm very happy about it. I didn't win it because I so much needed it as much as because on a moral principle I was entitled to it. If nobody's going to get it, I'm satisfied. If everybody's going to get it, I shouldn't be the only one that's not getting it, Phil. And I know you well enough to know that you wouldn't take it either. If you were in my position, you wouldn't take that. So, that's what happened. <laughs> hey, let's hear it for the rich folk. <laughs> but you tell us also in your book, you left Queens and you left Brooklyn for Manhattan to, uh, to get away from rent control. You're, you're honest to tell us in no, this I'm book. I'm honest. Hey, I'm not running for anything, Phil. I'm not running for office. I don't have to lie in a book. I want to tell the facts, okay? <laughs> rent, I mean, do you, want me to, do you want me to say little fibs and little this and little oh, no. that and how much we all love rent control and what a great thing it's been for New York? It's been a disaster for New York. It's badly hurt New York. It's crippled New York. It's made yes. it impossible for a lot of people to live in New York. And, and you see what's happening. You look at the Bronx. You look at certain parts of Queens and Brooklyn. You see what rent control's done. And I'm, I think you know it as well as anybody else. Rent control, and I'm one of the few developers in the world that would ever say it, some forms of rent control are sometimes necessary to protect the elderly, to protect people that truly don't have the money. But when you have multimillionaires, and not all instances of this, Phil, there's not all instances, but you go to Manhattan, the prime sections of Manhattan, where you have rent control and rent stabilization all over. Those are wealthy people in many instances, and I don't mean in every instance, Phil, but I mean in many, and I would say in a majority. You have multi-millionaires in some cases living in apartments for $200, $300, $500 a month that should be paying many times. This is going to sound a little unusual, but New York rents can be ten and $20,000 a month. What does that mean? What does that mean, Phil? That means that the city can't tax because if a wealthy person's paying $300 a month, you can't really tax that beyond a certain point, 20% of that or whatever it might be. So the city's always short of funds. It's a joke what's happened. And the people that need rent control, and there are some indeed, those aren't the people that have it. It's the people with the connections. Somebody knows Trump. Somebody knows somebody else. They call up. They say, do me a favor. That's yeah, what it's all about. If, if, uh, we, we, this, this audience wants to get in here. Mr. Trump, sir, <laughs> if your position is, uh, let's, 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 let's grant a given. No doubt about it. Under rent control circumstances, there's, there are going to be certain people who don't need it who get it not unlike Social Security. There are going to be some people who get it who don't need it. But to suggest that, that rent control is somehow being pervasively abused well, throughout the island of Manhattan by people doubt? who don't need it, I do have plenty of doubt. Uh, well, you ought to check the numbers, Phil. I mean, I can tell you right. something. Now, one, one little thing. All I'm asking for is a simple thing. Give a means test. If a person makes $150,000 a year working in a big advertising agency, 
If a person makes two hundred, three hundred, a hundred thousand, seventy-five thousand dollars a year, let there be a means test right. so that that person will give the apartment to somebody that can afford it if you have to do that, Phil. Let the, why can't there be a means test? Well, why I, should multimillionaires live for three or four hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. when poor people are paying yeah. more than that and, and have to pay more? And how many people would have to work in the office to determine whether or not people are of means or not of means? And would you build the hey. building? It would be a very large hey. one occupied by thousands of bureaucrats trying to figure out who does and who doesn't. You, you wouldn't, uh, you it wouldn't isn't that, that simple just to... And, and what you about know the, the kind of money you're talking about? If you emptied and made available to people that, could have, that, that need, really, this protection. The apartments occupied by very wealthy people. In New York, you're talking about tremendous amounts of money. And I mean, if you're talking about a number of accountants in order to administrate okay. a program, you're not talking about a lot relative to what we're talking. Okay. We've got a lot, just a couple more things I want to okay. get in. Let's see if we can get, briefly touch on some of these things. You should not have called Mayor Koch a moron. That was not good public <laughs> relations. <clears throat> hey. What can I do? Well, doesn't it, isn't this, aren't you a little, don't you want to take this back I don't back think it's all? bad public relations. Mm -hmm. No, I don't take it back. When it comes to running the city, he's about as bad as anybody I've seen. Ed Koch has been a disaster for New York. People that live in New York understand it. Taxes have gone through the roof. Everything's gone through. You have, whether it's a Wallman rink or a subway system, whether it's a school that comes in and takes eight or Excuse nine years. Excuse me, but years. here are you. You're out with your folks at City Hall getting your picture yeah, taken. Was well, it was the good right. old days? Well, I guess he liked me in those days. <clears throat> no, I just think that, uh, and, and this is, and I don't think you have to be uh, passionately committed to City Hall or anybody to, s to conclude that uh, this kind of language from someone of your power and influence is not good style. Phil, from my standpoint, it doesn't really matter. Again, I'm not running for office. If the point is made better by saying that, let the point be made. He's done a lousy job as the mayor. Anybody from New York probably understands it and knows it. It's, yes. it's gone down now, and it's going down as the mo most corrupt. Hey, Phil, this is the most corrupt administration in the history they of the city. They have their problem. Okay. I, uh... <clears throat> Thank you. I have here a collection of some of your uh, quotes from Newsweek. I'm happy to... Give them credit. <laughs> On his enemies. If, I, if people screw me, I screw, it, I screw back in spades. I mean, is there something wrong with that? Uh, tell me. Phil, um, is there something wrong with that? Well, a confrontational kind of, I'll get you, you no. son of a... Let me give you a little example, you if know, I can. Uh, okay. what, what? Let, let me give you an example. This country, as I walked into this room today, the stock market was down 75 points, okay? We should say that we're taping on November 30th. We're going to scare the life out of people who watch this. <laughs> we are taping on the last day of November in 1987, sir. There's a lot of problems. You had Black Monday. You have the catastrophe of a 508 ball. Let me, let me just give you one little example. We have countries out there that are so-called allies. And I use the word so-called because they're a disaster for this country. Yeah. Japan, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait. They're making billions and trillions of dollars while this country is going out and borrowing money from Japan in order to defend Japan. They don't spend for defense. We defend Japan. We right. get oil into Kuwait. Then they go out and they buy 10% of, right. of British petroleum. Right. I'll well, tell you what. I, you think know what they I, ought to, I think they ought to increase their defense spending a hundredfold and their economy will collapse just like ours has. The, Japan may ju Wasn't no, Japan a partner in your... Uh, TV City project? Japan wanted to be a partner. 25 percent, right? They want to buy it. They want to buy everything. You, hey, for 20 years minute. they've taken money out minute. and now they're coming back wait because a of a low dollar caused to a large extent by them and they you, want to put it back in. You had a hundred million dollar deal with the Japanese. You went back to them. You said you're changing the price to 160 million dollars. They said we're out of this. You went back to them and said, okay, a hundred million. They said we Tell don't want wrong. to deal Where with it. Where did you read this? You read the newspapers. You believe the that newspapers. That must be true. I read it in the New York Post. Well, okay. <laughs> Um, I, I thought that maybe is maybe is the case. Is it not true that you lost a Japanese uh, I didn't partnership? Lose anybody. Hey, nobody does a lot more business than me. Phil, let me just explain something. I build luxury apartments. We sold an apartment to a Japanese gentleman, a number of apartments for twenty-one million dollars. Okay. Right. I've sold other apartments for lots Some of money to the friend? Japanese. Some yeah. of my best friends. Okay. Right. I uh, just say, and I respect the Japanese, but good. they have taken tremendous advantage of the United States, folks, if, in case anybody doesn't And what do you want them to do? You want them what to... do I want them to do? I want us to be represented in such a way that we can compete with Japan. They've taken the money out for 20 years, and now they're buying it back in. So what they did is they took it out, and now they're coming in trying to buy all of Manhattan, trying to buy anything. And, I, Phil, I don't like being taken advantage of, okay? okay? On Michael Dukakis and the other Democratic presidential candidates, Americans are tired of the seven dwarfs. On Leona Helmsley, I feel sorry for Harry. 
<laughs> on Trump, there is no one my age who has accomplished more. Everyone can't be the best. And we'll Did be... I say that? That's what it says oh, here. Forget it. Don't believe it. And we'll be back in just Don't a moment. Don't believe it. to uh, accommodate something like 17 people or 14 or he has a couple of bedrooms does it I don't know, this is getting to be an embarrassing and you've program. got a <laughs> and you, you've also got a yacht uh, I forget the number the price on that um, we wanted to get something are you back. Happy? Hey, Phil. Are you happy? I mean, what are you, well, I'm what are happy. You... I mean, I wanted to get something back from Saudi Arabia, so I got one of their yachts, you know. It's, a, you know, it's about time. We should, take, we should do more of it. Everybody's getting from us. Now, NBC is not, is not apparently uh, going to, uh, uh, in any agreement with you on the terms of its occupancy of uh, Television City, right. a 150 story building which you want to construct on the Hudson River. It would, if you completed this project, be the tallest building in the world. And Wouldn't this... Wouldn't that be a great thing for New York? I mean, you left Chicago in all fairness, Phil. So, I mean, shouldn't New York have maybe the world's tallest building? Wouldn't that be a nice thing for New York, Phil? Uh, well, it, it depends. For those With, of us that are proud of New York, or used to be at least? Well, how much tax abatement is it going to take to build Television City? How will it contribute to the long-term well-being of the city? What money's not given? Uh, how will the tax money not uh, forthcoming to the city till influence people who are not of wealth? All these are pretty important questions. Why I don't do you say I'm asking for tax abatement on the world's source building? I'm not asking for tax abatement. You assume I'm asking for tax abatement. You're not asking for any tax abatement? No, I'm not asking for tax abatement on the world's source building. And, and, you know, not every job has to have tax abatement, Phil. That's one that, hey, if they want to give it to me, I'd love to take it. But to be perfectly honest, I'm not asking for tax abatement on the world's source building. Well, in what language... See, you're on the assumption that everything I do, I'm looking for an edge. And that's not necessarily correct. It's usually correct but it's not necessarily. Uh, well, what is the status of that deal? You and NBC have broken off now, talks. NBC, and... the process is going to be too long. I'm going for zoning on the west side. It's a fabulous parcel of land on the west side of Manhattan, fronting the water from 72nd to 59th Street, and I'm going for zoning. New York City is a very cumbersome process. This and is it will number be 30. I think very we have impossible. a shot. There it is. There it is. This uh, 100 acres, think about this, in Manha on Manhattan Island. This is That's the Hudson River. Now, what do you want... Uh, what shall we do with this property, and who shall decide? And how much? And who will uh, who will live there? Who will work there? Where will they park? How are they going to get into and how the what? Huh? How are they going to get into the Broadway and and Seventy Second Street subway station? Well, they're not. It's going to be a great big empty building, and nobody's going to be able to get to this thing. What? Just very briefly, what? Tell us what is uh, what is the status of this? It's and going through a long process that New York City in New York City, when you build something, you have to go through a very agonizing long process, and it's a process that's putting New York, frankly, at a great disadvantage with other cities because if you want to put something up, it could take years and years before you do it. We're toward the middle, maybe even rounding the corner on the end of that process, and I guess over the next uh, period of a year, hopefully it'll be ready. And if not, I'll just sit back and wait till a, perhaps a more progressive administration comes in. I'm not sure. I may have to do that, uh, which would be unfortunate for New York. Everybody agrees this site has to be developed. It's probably the most important site. You probably know it because you're in that area, but it's the most important site in New York, and it's got to be developed, and it will be developed. It's a question of when. It's a very important site for New York and for the future of New York. Yes, ma'am. What uh, charities do you benefit? Well, I give a lot of money to charity, and more and more so, and I think that I'm going to be doing more in the future. I gave uh, a lot of money to the Vietnam veterans. You remember the big parade in New York. I gave a million dollars toward that on a matching grant a year, a year and a half ago, whenever it was. And I think if you asked any Vietnam vet what they think of Donald Trump, I think they'd think, I hate to be talking about it, to be perfectly honest, because I don't like to be bragging that I gave a million dollars last year to the Vietnam vet and vets, and it's not really my style, and perhaps Phil and other people wouldn't like it even for my image, because it's not the image that they want to project. But I gave a lot of, I gave a lot of money to the uh, to United Cerebral Palsy, many millions of dollars. In fact, I gave them a building, uh, a lot of other money. I, I believe strongly that you have to put it back, and I, I give, I think, far more money, or, or 
in, in most cases, more money than just about anybody else comparably. Uh -huh. Okay? Thank I, you. You're going to have a... Uh, you're going to... You're going to have a very large party to celebrate uh, the publication of your book. I am told that this party, incidentally, I do not have, having reviewed all of the many invitations that I, of course, yeah. receive every day. I just happen to have one. I, I have not yet. This obviously, you, you know, the you'll have one service. by you'll have one by four o'clock. Oh, today. thank goodness! <laughs> it's probably the government again, the postal service. I'm sure lost it. Here's my question. You can't start this party in your atrium lobby of Trump Tower because that is a public arena, at least legally defined as such, until 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock is when it starts. So? Well, that's Don't late for a, for no, a it's not. party. No, now, no. wait a minute. When did wait you go? Minute. Remember Just the long. old days of Studio 54? When did you go there before 10 o'clock? If well, you ever went there. Maybe you never went there. You uh, never went to the club, so never you... Here's the point. Do you think it's possible that Mayor Koch himself decided to enforce the law and ensure that you couldn't get your party started? I tend to doubt it because he probably doesn't even know what's going on. So I tend to doubt it. <laughs> and we'll be back in just a moment. When it comes to office products and office furniture, Total Office Products, when it comes to office products and office furniture, Total Office Products has it all. Convenient service selection and a hot sizzling. Which disallows Hyatt from constructing a hotel in New York City or either of its end, including either airport, forever? Yes. Well, for about 40 years or so. I don't know if you call that ever, but for a long period of time. Hyatt yes. cannot build another hotel in New York City. That is essentially correct, yes. And that's because you put that into a deal that you struck with the Pritzkers in Chicago. Yes. Yeah. Do you gamble? Hopefully not too much. I mean, to be perfectly honest. Well, but I that speculate. is not what you hope your customers will do when they come no, to Atlanta. No, no, they gamble, and they win sometimes, and they lose sometimes. And, but you and don't gamble. I do not gamble, no. I assume you're disallowed from gambling in your own casino. I am. I'm not allowed to gamble, and they're the only places I'd want to gamble at anyway, because they're the best places, Phil. <laughs> Don, I was just wondering about what's the situation with the New Jersey Generals. Where are they at? The, uh, the court is, uh, we won the case, and we only got a dollar. That I, was the I, USFL. That was USFL. It was an interesting suit experience. against the NFL. Against the NFL. Saying you're a monopoly, and the court said you're right. Saying but only, they're a monopoly. I'm sorry, the NFL's a monopoly, and the court said they are a monopoly, and only awarded you one buck. Right. The courts gave us one dollar, uh, and uh, so we won the case, but we only got a dollar. That's on appeal right now, and I think we're going to be hearing the decision very shortly. And it's very possible. In fact, it's been up there for a long time in appeal, and it's very possible we're going to end up winning that. I think it's very possible because I think it was an injustice. We won the case but we didn't get the damages that we sought. And those people that follow the generals, the generals were a great success in New York and New Jersey. As you know, we had 45,000 people, average attendance. It was a tremendous success. I, and we'll see what happens. I assume you sided with the players during the NFL strike. Hey, I sided with everybody, Phil. <laughs> I happen to agree with your assessment of Mayor Koch in New York City. What do you think will finally have to happen to bring his downfall? Well, I, I have a feeling, and maybe it's more of a prediction, I think that the incompetence and corruption of the Koch administration will eventually lead to his resignation or his just having to be forced out, because uh, I think he's that bad. And as Phil says, I don't like mincing words, because what difference does it make? Again, I'm not running for office, so it doesn't matter. I can stand up here, and unlike a lot of people that I watch, I can say what I think. But I, that's much of a prediction. I believe that the incompetence and corruption will ultimately lead to his having to get out Hold on just one no. second. You keep saying you're not running for office, but why don't you? Run for mayor of New York. No, I wouldn't want to run for mayor of New York. Uh, I'd like to see somebody talented do that, and there's a tremendous potential in New York. New York is the great city. It's one of the great places of the world, but I really have no intention of running for mayor. Thank you. But you definitely are a political person, whether you run for office by what everything that you say and do points, points in that direction. You know what it is? I don't like being taken advantage of. Okay? And when I see a Japan ripping off this country, and I'm not saying that negative to Japan, I'm saying it from my standpoint. I'm a businessman, I know how to deal, and some of you folks do too. When I see a total ripoff of this country by Japan, where they literally have no defense budget, where we have to borrow money from them in order to get them oil and defend the Persian Gulf, where most of the oil goes to Japan and other countries, not us. We get 4% of our oil. When I see Kuwait, a total ripoff, we're bringing the Bridgeton. You remember the Bridgeton? 
their oil minister sat back and he laughed at how much money he's going to make. Why aren't we getting some of that money? Why aren't we getting it? They're taking in billions and billions of dollars, and we can't even land a helicopter on Kuwaiti soil. You tell me that's right. Saudi Arabia, they wouldn't even be there except for us. And in Saudi Arabia, we couldn't even use their minesweepers, Phil. You know it. We said, could we use your minesweepers? Ours are old, outdated, not worth a damn. They said, no, you can't use our minesweepers to protect the Persian Gulf. I mean, it's a disgrace what's well, going on. So, bottom line, Phil, I don't like being ripped off. And when I see something, I let people know. Unfortunately, nobody else does very much about it. Are you open to the political discussion that, it, that, that it is provoked by this question? Why are we protecting and risking the young, brave young men in the Navy when we're only getting 8% of our oil from that region? Why are we well, there in the first place, and well, why, don't you, why don't you pop off about that? I say it. I say it. We though. shouldn't have committed it. this armada in the first I place to it. this. Well, I'll tell you what. It's not a question of committing. Before we committed, we should have had Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and a lot of other countries, and Japan paying us a hell of a lot of money. For us to lose, and there's no money that can justify this, but for us to lose our men and to be spending billions and billions of dollars, and we're not a wealthy nation. We're a country that's losing $200 billion a year. And we can't give farm aid, and we can't give welfare, and we can't give this and that, and right down the line, uh, research on AIDS and all of the problems. And yet Japan is making hundreds of billions of dollars a year. Now, again, I respect them. They have totally taken advantage of this country. You can respect them, you can dislike them, you can do whatever you want. But they are ripping off the United States of America. Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, they're ripping off this country. And I don't like seeing it. And it shouldn't happen. And we'll be back in just a minute. Well, they like to spread the word that they're, they're not well in a mental sense and this and that. Well, that's nonsense. That's true in a certain percentage of the cases, a small percentage of the cases, but they just don't have housing. And you really need government programs to start up some housing. You need housing for low, moderate, and middle-income people. Did you tell the president that when you dined with him at the White House? I tell anybody that will listen to that. I, I say it very strongly. You need those programs, and if they're can not... Can you do that and have a 600-ship Navy, too? You can do that. Hey, hey, let me tell you the big problem, okay? If I might for a second. We're talking about $24 billion right now in this budget. It's peanuts compared to what we're losing. $200 billion more, nobody really even knows. If we got the money that we're entitled to from Japan from Kuwait, from Saudi Arabia, from all of these other countries that are taking such advantage of this great country of ours, we, would, we wouldn't have to raise taxes. You could have all the navies you want, and you could also have all the housing you want. Well, you because what, that's the quinella. That's the big money, Phil. I'll tell you what you can't have, in my opinion, Go for ahead. the sake of this conversation. Go ahead. You can't have Donald Trump buying 10% of Holiday Inn, or Allegis, or Bally, and then the word gets out on the street, here comes the big shark. Here comes Trump. Whammo, the stock goes up, and you bail out. And everybody who went up with you is left in the lurch after it crashes. It's like a well, bunch of... Well, who are of... the everybody's? Well, wait, wait, just a moment. Who are the everybody's? The everybody's are the ARBs from Wall Street. Did you ever meet an ARB? Do you think they're nice people? You talk about arbitrage. I mean, you know, do we feel sorry for these people? Uh, well, I don't I, think you feel sorry this, for these people, Phil. This, look, I'm, I'm not pretending to be the first person to make this observation. This creates no jobs makes no contribution toward the welfare and the future of, of uh, the country. It's like a three, four or five fat cats playing a board game with each other using highly leveraged, questionable paper and uh, a minimum down payment. And you, how much you make on... It's uh, too big. How much you make on Holiday Inn? 35 million, I read. Matter. Hey, Phil, it doesn't matter. It's too big a topic. Let me tell you something. What about the management? You have a stockholder, and the management wants to fight. There was a deal offered last week to somebody for $55 a share. The stock market dropped. The shares are down now to $30 a year. Management said, for the good of the stockholders, we're not going to do it. Is it for the good of the stockholders, or is it to keep their own jobs? Or tell me why. Why is it for the good of the stockholders that management not sell that stock for a huge price? So then what they do is they put all sorts of anti-this, anti-that in there, and the stockholders get killed because the stock goes from 55 down to 25 Tell me who gets hurt, Phil. Tell me who gets hurt. Now, there are both sides of that question, and I'm not on either side. You know, you seem to think I am, but I'm not on either side. You're you saying also as have. As long as this game is available, I'm going to play. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying you also have some very good companies that maybe shouldn't be taken over, but you have some very bad managements out there that should be, and they're entrenched, making huge salaries and killing the stockholders.
Are you affiliated with any uh, political party, and what do you think of the uh, Reagan administration? So well, I'm a Republican, and the uh, Reagan administration uh, was doing a great job for the psyche of the country after we went through the c catastrophe previous to that, but the last couple of years have been very bad for the Reagan administration, and Jim Wright unfortunately. Has, Jim Wright has asked you to host the Congressional Democratic Committee big hula bula in Washington, D.C. You turned him down. That's right. Boy, I'll tell you, did you, did you call your father before you turned him down? <laughs> your father, your father is, in my opinion, the personification of the entrepreneurial spirit working in partnership with the government that gave housing to all those hard-working blue-collar people in uh, Queens and Brooklyn. You don't have And programs. his beloved son, Donald, is building on Fifth Avenue. But, Phil, you just don't have the programs anymore. You used to have a lot of government programs. I built a lot of the housing. Talk I built. Jim hey, Wright. Maybe he has hey, something to say. You're right. You're, maybe you're absolutely right. But you it's, turned him it's down. It's absolutely necessary. But we can't be defending Japan, and we can't be defending Saudi Arabia and the Persian Gulf and everybody else and think that we're going to have low-income housing for people, which is desperately needed. Other countries have to pay us for the services we're rendering, or this country is going to go right down the tubes, and that is a shame. And we'll be back in just a moment. Yeah. This guy's something, isn't he? I made sure the whole complex was very clean and well-maintained. As I said earlier, I've always had a personal thing about cleanliness, but I also believe it's a very good investment. For example, if you want to sell a car and spend $5 to wash and polish it and then pile, apply a little elbow grease, suddenly you find you can charge an extra $400 and get it. I can always tell a loser when I see someone with a car for sale that's filthy dirty. It's so easy to make it look better. See what I could have been if I had listened to this advice? Where are you here? I saw... Uh, whose hand did I see? Someone. Yes, sir. How did you leverage that 200000 into this empire? Well, I was just asked that, and I must tell you, uh, it's just been, it's, it's a very difficult question to answer, actually. Just time and working and a lot of luck and, and a right. lot of principle and, I don't know, it just but all sort of happened. Said, you say in this book, this arbitrage business, this business of, is the easiest thing you've ever done. Is that uh, so? Arbitrage, or whatever you want to call it, buying stock is, is uh, obviously not very easy. It's, it's something you can do easily in terms of making money. You it just to seems me. to me, it just seems to me that if a person goes out who's got credibility and buys 5% or 10% or 15% of a company, it seems to me that there's only one thing that's going to happen, and that's the stock is going to go up. Now, maybe you can tell me yeah. differently, but, but it just but seems that the stock is going to go but up. But you only need, what, 10% of the, of the uh, cost of the acquisition. Everything else is leverage. Well, it's not leverage. It's not leverage in my case. It's leverage in some cases. Do you have any children? And how many? Yes, I have three children. Two boys and a girl. Is that That's so? correct. Yes, ma'am. You're, you're nearing the top and your peak in your financial career. Do you have, what do you see as a mountain peak in the future? Well, I, don't, I hope I'm not nearing the top. Oatmeal, raisin crisp? Hardware stores and home centers.